Welcome to the Sound the Alarm, Save a Life, In-Home Visit Team Training Video Module 4, Educator. Thank you for your interest in participating in Sound the Alarm, a home fire safety and smoke alarm installation event. These five video training modules provide a comprehensive overview on how to conduct a model in-home visit. We strongly recommend you view all video modules to gain a solid understanding of the in-home visit protocol and the support you'll be providing to your in-home visit team members. The videos are grouped together in a playlist for easy viewing on the American Red Cross Disaster Training YouTube channel. Please watch these video modules in a quiet space so that you can carefully follow along. The following topics will be covered in each video module. Module 1, Introduction everyone required to view. Module 2, conducting a model in-home visit with safety, quality, and effectiveness. Everyone required to view. Module 3, smoke alarm installer. Smoke alarm installers and documenters required to view. Everyone encouraged to view. Module 4, educator. Educators required to view. Everyone encouraged to view. Module 5, documenter. Documenters required to view everyone encouraged to view. We also recommend that this video be accompanied by hands-on training on or before the day of the event. Please contact your event leader for more information about hands-on training opportunities available in your area so that you can practice the skills taught in these video modules before you conduct an in-home visit. Learning Objectives At the completion of this session, you will gain an understanding of the following. The critical role and responsibilities of the educator how to effectively share home fire prevention tips during an in-home visit, the importance of smoke alarms and smoke alarm essentials, how to develop a two-minute home fire escape plan that will save lives, critical messages to share with residents. The main responsibilities of the educator during the in-home visit include the following. Greet resident, introduce program at the door, this function may also be fulfilled by the documenter or installer, depending on the preference of the in-home visit team. Engage residents in a discussion on home fire prevention. Review smoke alarm essentials with residents. Develop a two-minute home fire escape plan with residents. Share critical messages with residents. Remember, if a fire starts in your home, you may have less than two minutes to escape safely. Keep you and other members of your household safe with these two easy steps. Step 1. Test your smoke alarms monthly. Step 2. When you test your smoke alarms, practice your 2-minute home fire escape drill. Make sure everyone can escape in less than 2 minutes. Be sure to practice your 2-minute home fire escape drill at least twice a year with your entire household. If available, review one additional local hazard safety checklist with residents. Report to Documenter the education completed with residents. You know how important this program is. You feel passionate about its mission to save lives. You are eager to bring sound the alarm into the homes of individuals most at risk. However, first, you have to get in the door. The next video will show you how to effectively introduce sound the alarm to residents. How are you today? I'm well, how are you? Good, my name is Nora, I'm a volunteer with the Red Cross and we're here today going door to door installing free smoke alarms in your neighborhood. This is what the smoke alarms look like. They are part of Sound the Alarm Save a Life home visit and it is provided by us, the American Red Cross, and our partners. May I ask you a question? Sure. How many working smoke alarms do you have in your home today? I think I have one smoke alarm. I'm not sure if it's working. Uh, yeah, maybe one. Okay. If you don't mind, in just 20 minutes today, we can check to see if your smoke alarm is working and install up to three 10-year life smoke alarms today. These are free of charge and it should only take about 20 minutes. Do you mind if we come in today? I would really appreciate it. Um, thanks so much for coming. Wonderful, but ma'am, before we come in, I do have to ask that you are a resident of the home and that you're at least 18 years of age. <laughs> I'm definitely over 18. And yes, I live here. Please come inside. Thank you. 
Thanks. Hello. Here. Thanks for letting us come in today. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thank you. Now that you've met Norma and myself, I'd like to introduce our smoke alarm installer, John. Hello. Hi, John. Hi, I'm Liz. Nice to meet you all. It's nice to meet you too. With your permission, we would like to begin by walking through your home together to check to see if you have um, working smoke alarms and to also do a smoke alarm needs assessment. Then, if needed, we can install up to three 10-year life smoke alarms at no cost to you. Is that okay with you? That sounds great. Then, while Norma and John are installing your smoke alarms, if you don't mind, I would like to also walk through with you about fire safety that has helped save many lives. Does that sound okay? That sounds great. Thank you all. We know what causes home fires. The National Fire Protection Association's latest report on home structure fires shows that five leading causes account for 84% of reported home fires, 91% of home fire deaths, and 82% of home fire injuries. Cooking equipment is the leading cause of home fires and home fire-related injuries and accounts for 19% of home fire fatalities. Malfunctioning and improper use of heating, electrical, and lighting equipment together account for 35% of home fire fatalities, while only 5% of home fires are started by smoking materials. These fires are the leading cause of home fire fatalities. We know that home fire prevention is key to saving lives. Most home fires can be prevented by following basic safety tips. For example, did you know that unattended cooking is a common cause of preventable home fires, leading to unnecessary deaths and injuries? Unattended cooking is responsible for one-third of reported home cooking fires. That is why it is very important to always stay in the kitchen when frying, grilling, or using an open flame. Always remember, keep an eye on what you fry. Did you know that heating equipment being too close to things that can burn is another common cause of preventable home fires leading to unnecessary deaths and injuries? Over half of home heating fire deaths are caused by heating equipment that is located too close to things that can burn, such as upholstered furniture, clothing, mattresses, or bedding. That is why it is important to keep furniture, curtains, dish towels, and anything that could catch fire at least three feet from any type of heat source, including portable space heaters, fireplaces, stoves, furnaces, and hot water heaters. An easy way to remember this rule is to ensure that anything that could possibly catch fire is at least three feet from the heat. Did you know that electrical problems are another common cause of preventable home fires, leading to unnecessary deaths and injuries? The following are tips residents can follow to help keep their home safe from electrical fires. Always plug large and small appliances directly into wall outlets. Check electrical cords to make sure they are not running across doorways or under carpets where they can get damaged by foot traffic. Make sure that you have all electrical work done by a qualified electrician. Extension cords are intended for temporary use. Have a qualified electrician add more outlets in your home to reduce the use of extension cords. Did you know that children playing with matches and lighters still cause a large number of preventable deaths and injuries each year? That is why it is important to always keep matches and lighters locked away from children. Store matches and lighters up high and out of children's reach and sight, preferably in a locked cabinet or container. Did you know that smoking materials not properly extinguished, including cigarettes, pipes, and cigars, is another common cause of preventable home fires and is the leading cause of home fire fatalities in the United States? Mattresses, bedding, upholstered furniture, and trash are the items most commonly ignited in these fires. If you do smoke, please remember to properly extinguish all smoking-related materials. Never smoke in bed or where you may fall asleep and never smoke or allow anyone to smoke where medical oxygen is used. Medical oxygen can cause materials to ignite more easily and make fires burn at a faster rate than normal. It can make an existing fire burn faster and hotter. The Red Cross developed this home fire safety checklist because these factors have been identified as leading causes of preventable home fires, according to the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, unattended cooking, heating equipment located too close to things that can burn, electrical problems, children playing with matches and lighters, smoking materials not properly extinguished. The home fire safety checklist includes the main messages that the educator needs to communicate to residents during the in-home visit. During the in-home visit, 
it is critical for the educator to engage each resident in a targeted and meaningful conversation on home fire prevention using the home fire safety checklist. Here is how to share prevention and safety tips effectively. Research shows that individuals are more likely to adopt a new behavior if home fire prevention and safety messages are delivered in the following manner. Deliver messages in a friendly and courteous manner, as you would with a friend or colleague. Have a conversation. Avoid teaching or talking down to residents. Make people feel comfortable with you, not judged. Cater messages to the person and their home so that they are relevant. Walk through the home with resident and team members to understand the unique risks faced by household members, especially during smoke alarm needs assessment, home fire prevention discussion, and home fire escape planning to ensure messages are targeted and relevant. Ask residents what concerns they have about home fire safety. Always build confidence in a person's ability to prepare. Share personal past experiences with home fires. Share personal experiences about taking preparedness actions. Provide residents with specific actions that they can take to keep themselves and other household members safe. The following video will demonstrate how to engage residents in a home fire prevention discussion using the home fire safety checklist. Liz, I'd like to discuss with you some home fire safety tips, if that's okay. That sounds great. Hey, Jake. Hey, guys. What's going on? Hey, the team is here conducting a Sound the Alarm Save a Life home visit. They're actually installing smoke alarms for free. Really? And Nora's reviewing some key home fire prevention tips with us. Would you be able to join us? Sure. Liz, what concerns do you have about fire safety for you and your family? I have a four-year-old son, and I really worry about him. Uh, recently, we had a scare. Jake, remember? It was pretty scary. We were cooking spaghetti sauce over the range, and I got a phone call. I left the room. Uh, Jake got distracted with a neighbor at the front door, and he left with my son. And the next thing I know, I smelled the burning, I, I smelled smoke, and I ran into the kitchen. I turned off the burner. I dealt with the situation, and no one was hurt, but it really scared me. And um, so, that's fresh in my mind. Yeah, it scared me too. I'm so sorry to hear that, although I am happy everyone is safe and your house is fine, so that's mm -hmm. good. Although, when I did start volunteering for the American Red Cross, it did allow me to learn some key prevention tips on how to stay safe during a home fire. I recently did have a scare and it made me want to learn a lot more about how I can stay safe. We can learn those steps today if you'd like. I'd really like that. Jay, could you participate in this? Definitely. If you don't mind, can we go ahead and walk into the kitchen so I can teach you about cooking safety? That sounds great. Let's go. Let's do it. Did you know that unattended cooking causes a lot of home fires? This is what you can do to stay safe. Always keep an eye when you're grilling, frying, or having an open flame. An easy way to remember this is keep an eye on what you fry. Oh, I didn't know this. Jake, what do you think? Sounds simple enough. Keep an eye on what you fry. I'll definitely do that next time I'm cooking. I'll be sure to share with my husband as well. What else can we do to keep safe? I noticed something in the living room. If you don't mind leading the way. Sure, come on. I see that you have a number of space heaters out and also a fireplace. I wanted to let you know that a leading cause of home fires can be caused by heating equipment that is too close to things that can burn. Some of these are upholstered furniture, bedding, mattresses, dish towels, and curtains. This is what you need to do to stay safe. Always ensure that furniture, curtains, dish towels, or anything that can burn is at least three feet away from any heating source. An easy way to remember this is three feet from the heat. Do you guys have any questions? I think I got it. Jake, do you understand? Sounds pretty straightforward. It's also good to keep in mind, when purchasing new space heaters, select appliances with an automatic shutoff switch. Turn off portable space heaters before falling asleep or leaving the room. Also, supervise your children and pets when you do have an open space heater nearby. Okay guys, I noticed that you have a number of electrical cords and extension cords snaked under the carpet around the room. This is very dangerous. Did you know that many home fires are caused by this because cords can be damaged by foot traffic, overheat, and ignite the carpet or rug over them? 
This is what you need to do to stay safe. Always plug large and small appliances directly into the wall outlets. Check electrical cords to make sure they're not running across doorways or under carpets where they can get damaged. Extension cords are intended only for temporary use. And consider having a qualified electrician add more outlets into your home to reduce the use of extension cords. And make sure that you have all electrical work done by a certified electrician. This is really good information. I definitely have to rearrange things in this room with this in mind. Jake, what do you think? Sounds pretty straightforward. I noticed that you guys have matches and lighters on the table. With the little one in the house, this can be really dangerous because kids are typically curious about a lot of things that they see. Did you know that children playing with matches and lighters can cause house fires? This is what you need to do to stay safe. Always keep matches and lighters locked up and hidden away. And always store matches and lighters out of reach from children's sight. Up high, preferably locked in a cabinet or a container. I will definitely do this and I'm going to share this with everyone in my family. Um, I, this is really important. Thanks for letting me know. I noticed that there are smokers in the house. Did you know that smoking materials not properly extinguished like cigarettes, pipes, and cigars is another common cause of home fires and is the leading cause of home fire fatalities? This is what you need to do to stay safe. Properly extinguish all smoking materials and never smoke in bed. This is really good to keep in mind. I need to share it with my husband and Jake. We, we really have to keep this in mind, right? I'll try to do better. Would you like a copy of the home fire safety checklist? You know, I would love a copy. I wanted to sh uh, share with my husband if that's okay. Yeah, here you go. It's I mean, all yours. I, thank you so much, Jake. Let's 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 review it later too, okay? Sounds good. After we complete our discussion on home fire safety, I would like to review one additional hazard safety checklist with you. How does that sound? Yeah, that'd be great. We also know that smoke alarms properly installed, tested, and maintained play a role in saving lives if a home fire does occur. Working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in a home fire by half. A smoke alarm stands guard around the clock, and when it first senses smoke, it sounds the alarm. Working smoke alarms provide precious but limited time to escape. We know from research conducted by the National Fire Protection Association that three out of every five home fire deaths happen in homes with either no smoke alarms or non-working smoke alarms. Working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in a home fire by half. We know that even one working smoke alarm can make a difference. During the in-home visit, it is critical that educators share with residents the importance of having working smoke alarms and maintaining them appropriately so that they are always ready to provide that life-saving alert. As the educator, familiarize yourself with the type of smoke alarms that the installers will be installing, their operation and maintenance. During the in-home visit, the educator will share critical messages about smoke alarms with residents. Be sure to use an actual smoke alarm to orient the resident to the features that you're referring to and to get the resident comfortable with the smoke alarms that are being installed in their home. Allow the resident to handle a smoke alarm. Make sure to point out the test and hush buttons. The educator will share with residents the following information. Test smoke alarms monthly. Remind resident to test all smoke alarms monthly to make sure they're in working order. Working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in a home fire by half. Never disable smoke alarms, even temporarily. Remind residents to use the silence, hush feature in the event of a false nuisance alarm. Never disable smoke alarms, even temporarily, because then they would not be able to provide a life-saving alert in the event of a home fire. If residents experience frequent false nuisance alarms, they should consider relocating unit to another location. The educator will share with residents how to maintain smoke alarms in their home. 10-year smoke alarms should be tested monthly and replaced every 10 years or earlier if needed. Smoke alarms with non-replaceable 10-year batteries are designed to remain effective for up to 10 years. If the alarm chirps, warning that the battery is low, replace the entire smoke alarm right away. 9-volt smoke alarms should be tested monthly and have their batteries replaced at least once a year or earlier if needed. If the alarm chirps, warning the battery is low, replace the battery right away. 
When replacing a battery, follow manufacturer's list of batteries on the back of the alarm or manufacturer's instructions. Manufacturer's instructions are specific to the batteries, brand and model, that must be used. The smoke alarm may not work properly if a different kind of battery is used. Replace entire smoke alarm after 10 years or earlier if needed. Remember, regardless of whether an alarm is hardwired, 10-year or 9-volt, all smoke alarms should be tested monthly to ensure that they're in working order. All smoke alarms should be replaced after 10 years or earlier if needed. This includes hardwired units. The educator will provide the smoke alarm user's guide to resident. Instruct resident to review the smoke alarm user's guide thoroughly and to store it in a safe place so that they can easily refer to it in the event of any maintenance questions. Now, if you don't mind, I would like to review some critical information about smoke alarms, if that's okay. That sounds great. Yeah, sounds good. We know that smoke alarms properly installed and maintained play a role in saving lives if a home fire does occur. A smoke alarm stands guard around the clock, and when it first senses smoke, it sounds a shrill alarm. This often allows the family precious but limited time needed to escape. In order for smoke alarms to provide that life-saving alert, they need to be properly installed and maintained. The smoke alarms being installed in your home today are 10-year life smoke alarms. All of the information on how to maintain your smoke alarms are included in the user's guide, which must be provided to the family. To make sure that your smoke alarms are in working order, remember to test all smoke alarms monthly. You test by pushing the test button on the cover and holding it down for a minimum of 5 seconds or until the alarm sounds. Great, so now you understand the importance of testing all your smoke alarms monthly to be sure that they are all in working order. Never disable smoke alarms, even temporarily. Use the hush feature in the event of false alarm. Never disable smoke alarms. If you experience frequent false nuisance alarms, consider relocating the smoke alarm into another location. This is important because if you disable a smoke alarm, you and your family will not receive a life-saving alert in the event of a home fire putting you all at great risk. The smoke alarms that are being installed in your home today are equipped with a hush feature, which allows you to quiet the alarm easily in an event of a false or nuisance alarm. Before using the hush feature, identify the source of smoke and be certain that the safe condition exists. Then, if a safe condition does exist, please do the following. Push the hush button on the smoke alarm cover. Please know that more detailed information on the hush feature is provided in the user's guide. Now, I would like to let you know some basics on how to maintain your smoke alarms. Remember, you can find more detailed information in the user's guide. The smoke alarms being installed in your home today are 10-year life smoke alarms. Here's what you need to know. Test your smoke alarms monthly. Make sure they are in working order. Replace entire smoke alarms after 10 years or earlier if needed. Smoke alarms with the non-replaceable 10-year batteries are designed to remain effective for up to 10 years. If the alarm chirps, warning that the battery is low, please be sure to replace the entire smoke alarm right away. Remember, never disable smoke alarms, even temporarily. Use the hush feature in the event of a false or nuisance alarm. Never disable your smoke alarm. If you experience frequent false nuisance alarms, consider relocating the smoke alarm to another location. We also know that developing and practicing home fire escape plans saves lives. Here's how. It's the middle of the night. You're sound asleep when suddenly the smoke alarms in your house go off. It's dark. The house is filling up with smoke. Remember, if a fire starts in your home, you may have less than two minutes to escape safely. Would you and your household members know what to do? Everyone in your household needs to know what to do so that everyone can escape quickly and safely. Developing a home fire escape plan and practicing it at least twice a year with your entire household will help make sure that everyone is prepared to escape quickly and stay safe in the event of a home fire. With escape planning, please keep in mind, if a fire starts in your home, you may have less than two minutes to escape safely. Get out and stay out. Leave everything behind. Get out as quickly as you can and never go back into a burning building. If smoke or fire blocks one of your ways out, use another way out. If you must go through smoke, get low and go under the smoke to escape. Everyone in your household should plan to meet at your designated safe meeting place. 
Call 911 from a safe place outside your home. Here is how to develop a two-minute home fire escape plan. Step 1. Draw a map of home. Show all rooms, doors, and windows. Identify two main exits from home. Make sure that two main exits are always free of obstructions, including furniture and equipment. Make sure the doors open easily, allowing for a quick escape. Security bars. If doors in a home have security bars, make sure that the bars have emergency release devices inside so that they can be opened immediately in an emergency. Emergency release devices won't compromise security, but they will increase the chances of safely escaping a home fire. Step 2. In each room of home, determine the quickest path to get outside from each room and indicate it with an arrow. This is your first escape path. Determine a second path to get outside from each room and indicate it with an arrow. This is your second escape path. Make sure that ways out are always free of obstructions, including furniture and equipment. Make sure that windows and doors open easily, allowing for quick escape. Security bars. If windows or doors in home have security bars, make sure that the bars have emergency release devices inside so that they can be opened immediately in an emergency. Emergency release devices won't compromise security, but they will increase the chances of safely escaping a home fire. Escape ladders. Consider escape ladders for second floor sleeping areas or homes on the second floor or above. Learn how to use them and store them near the window. Step 3. Identify one specific safe meeting place where everyone in your household can meet in the event of a home fire. Remember, a home fire is confusing. Everyone in the household may escape via a different route. You need a meeting place so that all household members know exactly where to meet and connect with one another so that you can confirm that everyone is out. A safe meeting place should be in one specific fixed location at a safe distance from the home and in the front so that everyone in the household can meet firefighters when they arrive and inform them that everyone is out of the home and safe and accounted for. Remember, for a safe meeting place to work, everyone in your household needs to know where it is. And remember to always call 911 from a safe place outside of the home. What makes a good safe meeting place? What makes a poor choice for a safe meeting place? Driveway of Lopez Family Home, directly across the street from our front door. Good choice. Why? Because it is one specific and fixed location, safe distance from home, front. Garage. No, not safe distance from home. Flammable materials inside need to get away from a burning home. Motorcycle that is usually parked outside. No, someone may move motorcycle. Not a fixed location. Step 5. Make arrangements for infants, children, older adults, and individuals with disabilities, access, or functional needs who may need assistance to escape during a home fire. Remember, smoke alarms may not always wake up children in the event of a home fire. If there are infants, children, older adults, or family members with disabilities, access, or functional needs, make sure that someone is assigned to assist them as part of your two-minute home fire escape plan. Assign a backup person, too, in case the designee is not home during the home fire. For individuals with disabilities, access, or functional needs, consider developing a comprehensive evacuation plan in advance with family and individuals providing personal care assistance. Complete a personal assessment of functional abilities and possible needs and create a personal support network to assist in the event of a home fire. Note on pets. The best way to protect your pets from the effects of a fire is to include them in your two-minute home fire escape plan. When you practice your escape plan, practice taking your pets with you. Train them to come to you when you call them. During a home fire, the most important thing you can do to protect your pets is to evacuate them. However, never delay escape or endanger yourself or your family to rescue a family pet. Never go back inside for pets in a fire. Tell firefighters if your pet is trapped. Remember to practice. Once the plan is complete, written down and shared with all household members, it should be practiced at least twice a year by all members of the household to be sure that it can be implemented appropriately and to identify any gaps or problems that require refinement so that it works as expected. When you practice your plan, it is called a two-minute home fire escape drill. When you practice your two-minute home fire escape drill, time yourselves. Were all members of your household able to escape in less than two minutes? 
When you practice your drill, reaffirm critical messages with all household members. If a fire starts in your home, you may have less than two minutes to escape safely. Get out and stay out. Leave everything behind. Get out as quickly as you can and never go back into a burning building. If smoke or fire blocks one of your ways out, use another way out. If you must go through smoke, get low and go under the smoke to escape. Everyone in your household should plan to meet at your designated safe meeting place. Call 911 from a safe place outside your home. Now that you know the importance of developing and practicing a home fire escape plan, we encourage you to ensure that you and your entire household have developed and practiced a two-minute home fire escape plan before participating in an in-home visit. We want you and your household members to be safe. And by developing and practicing your own two-minute home fire escape plan, you are better able to guide residents through the process of developing their own plan because you speak from experience. During the in-home visit, it is critical for educators to take the time to help residents develop a two-minute home fire escape plan using the home fire escape laminated board provided. This tool will save lives. Guide the residents through the steps. Step 1. Have resident draw a map of home. Show all rooms, doors, and windows. Identify two main exits from home. Front door, side door. Make sure that two main exits are always free of obstructions, including furniture and equipment. Make sure that doors open easily, allowing for quick escape. Security bars. If doors in a home have security bars, make sure that the bars have emergency release devices inside so that they can be opened immediately in an emergency. Emergency release devices won't compromise security, but they will increase the chances of safely escaping a home fire. Step 2. Visit each room of the home with resident and team members. Help the resident determine the quickest path to get outside from each room and indicate it with an arrow. This is the first escape path. Help the resident determine a second path to get outside from each room and indicate it with an arrow. This is the second escape path. Make sure that ways out are always free of obstructions, including furniture and equipment. Make sure that windows and doors open easily, allowing for quick escape. Security bars. If windows or doors in home have security bars, make sure that the bars have emergency release devices inside so that they can be opened immediately in an emergency. Emergency release devices won't compromise security, but they will increase the chances of safely escaping a home fire. Escape ladders. Consider escape ladders for second floor sleeping areas or homes on the second floor or above. Learn how to use them and store them near the window. Step 3. Help the resident identify one specific safe meeting place where everyone in the household can meet in the event of a home fire. A safe meeting place should be in one specific fixed location at a safe distance from the home and in the front so that everyone in the household can meet firefighters when they arrive and inform them that everyone is out of the home and safe and accounted for. Remember, for a safe meeting place to work, everyone in the household needs to know where it is. And remember, to always call 911 from a safe place outside of the home. Step 4. Make arrangements for infants, children, older adults, and individuals with disabilities, access or functional needs who may need assistance to escape during a home fire. Remember, smoke alarms may not always wake up children in the event of a home fire. Make sure that someone is assigned to assist them as part of your two-minute home fire escape plan. Assign a backup person too, in case the designee is not home during a home fire. Step 5. Request residents to verbally share their two-minute home fire escape plan with you to ensure that all members of household can safely evacuate the home in less than two minutes. Remind residents to share their two-minute home fire escape plan with their entire household. Remind resident to practice a two-minute home fire escape drill at least twice a year with all members of the household. Encourage resident to time themselves during the drill to make sure that all members of the household can escape in less than two minutes. When the drill is practiced, remind resident to reaffirm critical messages with all household members. If a fire starts in your home, you may have less than two minutes to escape safely. Get out and stay out. Leave everything behind. Get out as quickly as you can and never go back into a burning building. If smoke or fire blocks one of your ways out, use another way out. If you must go through smoke, get low and go under the smoke to escape. Everyone in your household should plan to meet at your designated safe meeting place. Call 911 from a safe place outside your home.
We want you and your family to be safe at all times. Home fires can be really confusing. Remember, if a fire starts in your home, you may have less than two minutes to escape safely. Would you and your family know what to do? It is critical that everyone in your home know what to do in the event of a home fire. Developing and practicing a home fire escape plan at least twice a year with your entire household will make sure that everyone is prepared to escape quickly and stay alive in the event of a home fire. When I started volunteering for the American Red Cross, I did learn to develop a home fire escape plan. Now, my family and I practice it twice a year. We all feel much safer now that we have this plan in place. Would you guys like to develop a home fire escape plan? Definitely. If a fire starts in your home, you may have less than two minutes to escape safely. Get out and stay out. Leave everything behind. Get out as quickly as you can and never go back into a burning building. If smoke or fire blocks one of your ways out, use another way out. If you must go through smoke, get low and go under the smoke to escape. Call 911 from a safe place outside your home. Now that we have reviewed the critical information, let's build your home fire escape plan. Step one, the first thing we need to do is draw a map of your home. Remember to show all rooms, doors, and windows. Once you've clearly identified all of your rooms, doors, and windows, now you can identify the two main exits of your home. Make sure that your two main exits are always free of obstructions, such as furniture and any equipment, allowing for a quick escape. What's the quickest way to get out of the room? This would be your first escape path. Now we need to identify your second escape path. Let's mark that on your home fire escape plan using an arrow. This is your second escape path from your bedroom. Now that we have identified the first escape and the second escape path from each of your room in your home, and we have ensured that the ways out are always free of obstructions, including furniture and equipment, and that windows and doors open easily, allowing for a quick escape. It's time to move on to the next critical component of the home fire escape plan, which is identifying a safe meeting place where everyone in your household can meet in the event of a home fire. Remember, a home fire is confusing. Everyone in the household may escape via a different route. You need a meeting place so that all your household members know exactly where to meet and connect with one another so that you can confirm that everyone is out. A safe meeting place should be in one fixed location at a safe distance from the home and in the front so that everyone in the household can meet firefighters when they arrive to inform them that everyone is out of the home and safe and accounted for. Remember, for a safe meeting place to work, everyone in your household needs to know where that is. What would be a good safe meeting place for you and your family? Remember, for a safe meeting place to work, everyone in your household needs to know where it is. Make sure you inform all household members and any visitors you may have. And remember to always call 911 from a safe place outside of your home. Let's go ahead and record your safe meeting place in your home fire escape plan. Great, now that we moved on to the next step, remember to make arrangements for infants, children, older residents and individuals with disabilities, access or functional needs who may need assistance to escape a home fire. Remember, recent research indicates that smoke alarms may not always wake up children in the event of a home fire. You need to formally task a person in your family to wake him or her up in case they need to escape. Assign a backup person too, in case the primary person is not home during the incident of a home fire. Now that we have your two minute home fire escape plan written down, it is critical that you share it with all the members of your household. And don't forget the final step. Practice your two minute home fire escape plan at least twice a year with all the members of your household. Be sure to time yourselves when you practice your drill to ensure that all members of your household are able to meet at your safe meeting place in less than two minutes. When you practice your drill, remember to reaffirm critical messages with the household members. Remember, if a fire starts in your home, you may have less than two minutes to escape safely and meet at your safe meeting place. Get out and stay out. Leave everything behind. Get out as quickly as possible and never ever go back into a burning building. If smoke or fire blocks one of your ways out, use another way out. If you must go through smoke, get low and go under the smoke to escape. Call 911 from a safe place outside the home. We've covered a great deal. Let's review. Can you share with me the steps you and your family would take 
If in the event you did have a home fire at night and you and your family were all sleeping in your respective bedrooms? Sure. Uh, now that we've got our escape plan and we know all of these amazing tips, um, because we've practiced our plan, we know these messages, I would understand and we'd all know uh, that we have less than two minutes to escape safely. Um, we'd all know to get out and stay out. We would leave everything behind. We'd get as out as quickly as we can and we'd know to never go back inside. Um, if smoke or, flat or fire blocks one of our ways out, we would all know to use another way out. But if we must go through smoke, we would all know to get low and go. Um, we would know to call 911 from a safe place outside the home. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, if I had to evacuate in the middle of the night, I'm the primary person for my son. So actually I would immediately go to my son's room. I would gather him in my arms. I would use my first escape route or if blocked my second escape route, um, I would know to get low and go. Um, I would immediately go to our safe meeting place, which is the Lopez uh, front door, um, and I'd call 911. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Jake and my husband would have already escaped or be in the process of escaping, um, and they would do the same thing. They would use their primary escape route, or if blocked their secondary escape route, they would always know to get low and go under smoke. Um, they would immediately go to the Lopez front door, and they would call 911. So first, I guess first who gets there calls 911 and um, we would get the uh, fire department there as soon as we can. Um, the great thing that we, we now know we've got a safe meeting place so we can all meet together um, and we can, can connect with one another. Uh, so I feel really, really happy about this and really excited. Um, and I can't wait till my husband comes home. We can all practice our plan tonight. What do you think, Jake? Sounds like a good idea. That's great. I'm so glad you learned a lot today. Thank you so much. I feel so much more confident now, and I feel, I feel great knowing I can take care of my son and my family better. Fire drills are important for all homes, including apartment buildings and other high-rise structures. You need to know the basics of escape planning, from identifying two ways out of every room, to getting low and going under smoke, and the importance of practicing how you would respond in an emergency. Be aware that sometimes the safest thing you can do in a tall building fire is to stay put and wait for the firefighters. For a specific client-facing tip sheet, download High Rise Apartment and Condominium Safety by NFPA. Or download Mapping Out Your Escape Plan, High Rise Apartment Complex by Red Cross. To increase fire safety for apartment dwellers, NFPA offers the following guidelines. Know the plan. Make sure that you're familiar with your building's evacuation plan, which should illustrate what residents are supposed to do in the event of an emergency. The evacuation plan should be posted in places where all residents can see and review it, and the building management should hold a fire drill with occupants at least once a year. Most states also require that buildings periodically test their fire safety systems as well. Be sure to participate when your building drills take place. When looking for an apartment or high-rise home, look for one with an automatic sprinkler system. Sprinklers can extinguish a home fire in less time than it takes for the fire department to arrive. Practice is key. Whether your building has one floor or 50, it's essential that you and your family are prepared to respond to a fire alarm. Identify all of the exits in your building, and if you're using an escape planning grid, mark them on your escape plan. Make sure to mark the various stairways too, in case one is blocked by fire. Never use the elevator. In case of fire, always use the stairs to get out, never the elevator. Make sure to practice using the stairs as part of your escape plan. If someone in your family has difficulty climbing down steps, make sure to incorporate a contingency for this into your plan. Stay low. Smoke from a fire is toxic and deadly no matter what kind of structure you live in. When you hold your fire drill, everyone in the family should practice getting low and going under the smoke to the exit. In the event of a fire, if both stairwells are filled with smoke, stay in your apartment and wait for the firefighters. Seal yourself in for safety. If you can't exit an apartment building due to smoke or fire in the hallway, call the fire department to report your exact location and gather in a room with a window to await their arrival. Close all doors between you and the fire. Use duct tape or towels to create a seal around the door and over air vents in order to keep smoke from coming in. Stay by the window. 
If possible, you should open your windows at the top and the bottom so fresh air can get in. Don't break the window. If smoke enters the room from outside the building, you won't be able to protect yourself. Signal to firefighters. Wave a flashlight or light-colored cloth at the window to let the fire department know where you're located. Avoid delays. Some residential buildings have vanity addresses or building names which are not actual addresses. To avoid a delay, use your building's street number when reporting an emergency. Remember to share the following critical messages with residents during the in-home visit. Remember, if a fire starts in your home, you may have less than two minutes to escape safely. Keep you and other members of your household safe with these two easy steps. Step 1. Test your smoke alarms monthly. Step 2. When you test your smoke alarms, practice your two-minute home fire escape drill. Make sure everyone can escape in less than two minutes. Be sure to practice your two-minute home fire escape drill at least twice a year with your entire household. We've done a great deal today, but before we say goodbye, I just wanted to review some critical messages with you. Is that okay? Sure. Remember, if a fire starts in your home, you have less than two minutes to escape safely. Keep you and your family safe. Just follow these two easy steps. Step one, test your smoke alarms monthly. And step two, when you test your smoke alarms, practice your two minute home fire escape drill. Make sure everyone can escape in less than two minutes. Be sure to practice your two minute home fire escape drill at least twice a year with your entire household. Now I have to ask, do you guys have any last minute questions or have any other questions in regards to what we did in your home today? No, I feel great. I really look forward to sharing this with my husband when he gets home. I, I really feel confident that I know how to keep my family safe. Yeah, me too. Thanks, guys. It is our pleasure. Also, I would like to thank you for being a part of Sound the Alarm Save a Life home visit provided by the Red Cross and our partners. It was really nice meeting you guys, and you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for coming out. It's been so great to have you here. Thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank and you. thanks for inviting us into your home. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Another, another house up here. If available, educators will review one additional hazard safety checklist with the resident during the in-home visit. The in-home visit is a unique opportunity to share this life-saving preparedness information with the resident. Note, additional hazard safety checklists include earthquake, flood, hurricane, tornado, wildfire, winter storm. Please note that your event leader will share with you which hazard you will be covering during the in-home visit. This hazard has been selected based on the geographic area in which you live. Before we wrap up, please reflect on the following questions to see what you remember from this training. Question number one, what are the main roles and responsibilities of the educator? Answer, if you recognized A, B, C, D, and E as the responsibility of the educator, you are correct. The main responsibilities of the educator during the in-home visit include the following. Greet resident. Introduce program at the door. Engage residents in a discussion on home fire prevention. Review smoke alarm essentials with residents. Develop a two-minute home fire escape plan with residents. Report to documenter. Education completed with residents. Question number two. How can you most effectively share home fire prevention and safety tips during the in-home visit? Answer. If you said A, you are correct. Have a conversation with residents and don't talk down to them. Question number three. What critical messages on smoke alarms will you be sure to share with the residents during the in-home visit? If you answered A, B, C, and D, you are correct. 
Remember, regardless of whether an alarm is hardwired, 10-year, or 9-volt, all smoke alarms should be tested monthly to ensure that they're in working order. Never disable smoke alarms, even temporarily. Maintain installed smoke alarms based on manufacturer's instructions. All smoke alarms should be replaced after 10 years or earlier if needed. This includes hardwired units. Question number four. Developing and practicing a home fire escape plan at least twice a year with your entire household will make sure that everyone is prepared to escape quickly and stay safe in the event of a home fire. True or false? Answer. This is a true statement. Question number five. What are the most critical messages to share with the resident? Answer. That's right. Each of these three messages are critical to share with residents during each in-home visit. Remember, if a fire starts in your home, you may have less than two minutes to escape safely. Test your smoke alarms monthly. Be sure to practice your two-minute home fire escape drill at least twice a year with your entire household. Congratulations on completing Module 4. To continue your preparation to join a Sound the Alarm in-home visit team, please make sure you view the following. Module 5, Documenter. We strongly recommend that you view all video modules to gain a solid understanding of the in-home visit protocol and the support you'll be providing to your in-home visit team members. We also recommend that this video be accompanied by hands-on training on or before the day of the event. Please contact your event leader for more information about hands-on training opportunities available in your area so that you can practice the skills taught in these video modules before you conduct an in-home visit.